My name is John Secura. And can you tell me your connection to horse racing? So I'm, I'm the owner of Hillendale Adelapa, a thoroughbred farm in Kentucky where we stand stallions, we breed and sell yearlings for the public market, and we also race some horses as well. And what got you starting in, in the horse business? Uh, at a young age, I just found it a passion and uh, followed my dreams and, uh, you know, every year try to do more and do better, and I think it's the greatest game in the world. And you know, what's your earliest memories, man, as a horseman? So I, I moved to Kentucky from Toronto, Canada, and uh, I remember going to sales with my dad at a young age, and I remember coming to Kentucky and seeing the grandiose parties and, uh, you know, yearling selling for fortunes of money, and I just thought, wow, this is the pinnacle of the business and one day it's what I want to do and this is where I want to be to do it. And favorite moment all the time? There's personal moments where we've had achieved or done something that's significant and then there's wider moments where you've just observed something great in the sport like Secretary winning the Belmont. You know that's a, a public ownership not a personal ownership and then uh, we've bred Belmont winners and Preakness winners and you know, significant horses to win significant races. So those achievements are nice too, but I think the most rewarding are the the, the moments like American Pharaoh winning the Triple Crown where I was at Belmont for that and uh, just seeing the, the whole world sort of embrace the sport on its best day with a pinnacle achievement. That's that's pretty pretty neat to be part of just as a just as a fan, you know? You know, as a breeder, can you tell when you when you got a, a good horse early? Yeah, I mean you you're always hopeful but Looks will fool you because the one thing you can't see is how bad does somebody want it, be that an animal or a person, right? So those that want it the most, they usually achieve the best, the you know, they're the highest achievers. And you don't know that that till they face adversity, until they're challenged. So, you know, pedigree, athleticism, a lot of things in your favor, but uh, you never really know uh, who's going who's gonna to be the right horse. If they did, uh, the guy that spends the most money would have all the best horses. So probably good that it's... Uh, it's a formula that can't really be uh, figured out. And you know, um, do you got a favorite horse all the time? Uh, I have a favorite horse. Uh, yeah, probably a mare named Dejin, who was a, a sister of Touch Gold. We bred a Derby, uh, sorry, a Belmont winner in Touch Gold. And the full sister to Touch Gold was a mare named Dejin, and she was a great producer, and uh, she's a mare I had a lot of affection for. So she's one I'll always remember. How important is the men and women that do this job every single day? Man? There's there's no business without it. Like They, they do all the hard work, so uh, often not glorified, often not recognized, but you buy a horse, you need someone to take care of that horse. They devote their lives. A lot of them live on the backside, so their welfare and adequate housing, suitable wage, all those things are hugely important for, for the ethics of the business and for... Uh, the way the business works, you know, we, you know, we've sort of displaced a lot of local American labor, where African Americans were the predominant grooms and and people that worked with horses. Now it's Hispanic people, and um, you know, whoever's there, we need to take care of them. So they they work long hours. It can be a dangerous job. It's a total commitment. They have families there, and uh, you know, they put the horse in front of everything. So we need to make sure those people are. Well taken care of and be fair to them. Thank you, sir. All right.